Well, hey there, friends. Welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I am your host, Wendy Batten, and I am super duper happy to have you here with us today. I am also super duper excited because next week, I hope you've heard about this, but next week we start a live coaching week inside my retailer's inner circle. So from February 19th to the 23rd, I am going live every day and we're going to go through the foundational business course that I have inside my inner circle called Retail Made Simple. And I am so excited about it. I just cannot tell you how much fun it's going to be. We have never gone through live inside the retailer's inner circle. So I want to let you know that it's going to be so much fun because I'm bringing all the energy to it. We're going to be helping real independent shop owners just like you who have a great business, but maybe you'd like to refine those business skills. We cover leadership and your role as the CEO, you know, putting that CEO hat on like we talk about a lot here, financial management, sales and marketing strategies, and implementation for real retailers, again, and how we can make time for the things that are important. We're going to do all of that and we're going to plan it all out so that you can get the results that you want. We love to support small business owners inside the inner circle. It is our, I don't know, pride and joy, I guess. We have expert mentorship so you can move forward in your business with clarity and confidence. I, you know, I'm reading from this, but I'm going to tell you, I keep interrupting myself because I'm so excited about what happens inside the inner circle. We love to bring retail bosses together. We are a tight community. Every month we have the round tables. We help you grow your knowledge in business areas, the areas of leadership, the areas of sales, the areas of marketing. We take a lot of what you hear on the podcast and we expand upon it and no silly questions. Like we have questions that get asked, you know, asked anything, we kind of we just want to empower you to be more confident in your retail business. So the retailers inner circle is really where you need to be. I'm going to tell you that right now, especially next week. This is such a great week, like join now get get your feet wet, get, get excited about what's coming with us because we're going to be building up excitement. I'm, I'm really excited about this. And join us live for the week of real live you and me, we're going to be doing live coaching for the whole week. And we're going to be coaching from February 19th to the 23rd. The good news is if you are listening to this at a later date, that training's still there. You've got access to that training. So you might not be able to do it live, but you can still ask your questions. You can still do the training. You can still refine and optimize what you're doing in your retail business. The Retailers Inner Circle is where you need to be. It is designed to equip you to make the time And even if you think you don't have the time and no matter how much, you know, how much, how many excuses, I guess we sometimes we make about time and not having time to do these things, it's, we're going to help you make the time so that you can grow your business. I promise you it will be a win and it is a perfect time to join us. You can find out more information on the Retailers Inner Circle, which again is my private group coaching program. It's called retailersinnercircle.com. You can also find it on my website at wendybatten.com. But sometimes retailersinnercircle.com is just easier to remember, right? So we're going to jump into today's podcast. And it does have something to do with making more money, and which is part of our financial leadership, part of our financial responsibility. And of course, something we're always working on and changing or always working on, I guess, to improve. And we're going to talk today about optimizing different revenue streams. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about some different ideas and different revenue streams that you might not have thought about or that you might want to implement in your business. And it's not about adding more. It's about getting more efficient. It's about doing better for our clients, maybe not doing better because I know you're doing well, but maybe offering more, maybe filling a gap that's missing in your community. So let's jump into today's podcast. We're going to be talking about multiple revenue streams and how to generate different revenue streams inside our retail business. So let's go. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. 
Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, so I have the privilege and the pleasure of working with retailers all over the globe doing all kinds of different things. And what I what I love and what I love to help people do is see bigger things, see opportunities, see what's possible for them, see what's possible for their community, see what's possible for their family, see what's possible for their shop, all of, you know, their staff, their team. And something that is often neglected are opportunities for different revenue streams. And by that, you know that I, we talk a lot about our responsibility. I guess we're at the, the front of house, right? And the back of house. We talk about this a lot here on the podcast, our roles as the person who, you know, has the passion for the things we sell on the front of house and our team and all of that and everything that's amazing about the store itself, the shop or studio that you have. But then there's also that CEO in the back, right? That we have to be. And that CEO is like, you know, we need to optimize and maybe make some more money. So this is actually an opportunity for us to meet in the middle <laughs> and we can add revenue streams. So you know, this is where we excel as well, too, because we aren't just running our businesses from a spreadsheet, right? We are running our businesses with spreadsheets, but not running it from a spreadsheet. Super big difference, right? We have heart, we have head, we have passion, we have data, and that's how we can make those big decisions and see success. So I want you to reframe a little bit on how you think about the things that you sell. Some of you do this a lot. Some of you, you know, are coming up with ideas all the time. But and some people, this is a whole new concept. So if that's you and you haven't really thought about different revenue streams, or if you've thought about re revenue streams and you want some more ideas, this is the show for you today. We are going to learn to work smarter, not harder. We want to make sure that if one category of sales goes down, we still have another option and all our eggs are not in one basket because we know what happens when that happens, right? So we also don't want to be squirrel brain and shiny object syndrome, you know, looking at every crazy fad or everything and taking everything that Wendy says today and writing it down and like, we're going to do all of these things. So we also want to not do that. So we want to do a brainstorm about ideas and possibilities, but we're not going to do all the things, right? So as entrepreneurs, we're so great at idea generation. It's the action to get it done that is usually the problem. And by that, I mean, we might, I might give you some ideas and you're going to be like, oh, that's all awesome. But to actually take the bandwidth and the time to do them is where we have to kind of put our CEO hat on and dig down deep. So we, I want you to be open to new creative ideas. I'm not trying to add to your squirrel brain or shiny object syndrome. And I'm going to give you four areas that you can consider adding revenue um, revenue streams, just different, different ideas, different revenue types, I guess. But I do want you to consider before we, before we jump into the four types is funneling. I want, I'm going to give you my funnel and my funnel and my filter that I give myself and that I give, I go through with my clients as well about adding a new revenue stream. So the first one is, you know, how, you know, how do we decide what we're going to offer in this store? Like what new revenue stream are we going to do? So the first question you want to ask yourself is, am I excited about this? Does this light me up? I know it seems like kind of, you know, maybe not very spreadsheety and CEO-ish, but you know what, if you're not excited about something and you're not lit up about it, it's not going to be easy to sell. It's not going to be easy to do. It's not going to be easy to stay excited and, and, and do all the work that might need to get done. So does it light you up? Does this product or service have a good profit margin? Does it have a good profit margin? And we're going right for the math because that is where a lot of people say, no, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't really. Or maybe you have to do some work around it. And I'm going to give you some examples as we go through the four types of revenue streams that you may want to consider adding. But profit margin, we need to have profit. So I've got my finger out. For those of you who know and you coach with me, I got my finger out. It has to be profitable. The next question is, do I have, a, do I have the bandwidth 
for this? Like, do I have the energy? Do I have the capacity to take this on? You know, could I, could I, could I do this? Or can my team do this? You know, do, do we have as a team, as a, you know, as we are right now, and as we feel about things, do I have the bandwidth to take this on? And it's a really big, important question. That might not be what's on your spreadsheet. Spreadsheet might make it look really good, but bandwidth. So it's really important. Capacity and bandwidth are really important. And then the next question I always like to ask is like, what what could this look like? So don't be quick to say, oh, that's so dumb, Wendy. <laughs> it would never work here. <laughs> like start asking yourself, you know, what could that look like? Some things, this might be a seed planting session for you where you might might spark a little idea and then just ask yourself, what could that look like? Would my, Will my customers love this? Now, this is a really important question. <laughs> I mean, they're all really important questions, but will your customers love this? Like, will they love it? Or are there new potential customers who would love it? So maybe you want to branch out into a different type of customer or you want to add a different type, you know, an age group or whatever. So will your customers love this? Or is there a group of people who will love this? Like love it. They have to love it. It's not just like meh. Okay. <laughs> so we have to ask that question. And, you know, on that note of the new customers, be open to new customers and changing and the and your customers changing needs. So be I mean, I know you're doing this, right? Because if you're listening to this podcast, you're super, you know, you're super attentive to all your business needs. So you have probably a, like an awareness that customers change, their 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 needs change. And there's a possible, there's a whole pool of new people. There's a whole pool of new people that could come into your shop or that you could attract or that we can find for you with some of these revenue streams. So those are some of the filters just to think about as you're going through. Okay, our very first type of recurring revenue to add to your store as it is today. I'm not telling you to reboot your whole store. I'm just saying, what could we add to your store that would make it a little bit more profitable? And again, going through those things, make sure you have bandwidth and all of that and profitable. So the first one is recurring and returning. So a recurring revenue stream that you could add would be something like a subscription box. Like we can do that quarterly, seasonally, monthly, or even limited edition boxes or products. So a recurring product means that, you know, they're going to buy it every quarter. They're going to buy it, you know, they're going to either get on a program and there's all kinds of tech to help you with that, or you're just going to sell them in store. But what is something that we can be sure that, you know, we already have pre-sold, we have, you know, usually with subscription boxes or limited edition boxes, we have those pre-sold. Another thing that could bring you in a little bit of extra something, something might be a membership. Maybe you're going to start a VIP club or an educational club or something along that lines, the, a book club or craft club. You know, what's the common interest of your shop people, your shop people, your customers, and maybe they get exclusive benefits and priority access or discounts on products. There's all kinds of different things that we can do on a VIP membership club. And there's all kinds of different formats um, that that runs. The next one is considering consumables. Now, I know a lot of you already have consumables. Um, but you, if you don't have consumables, I want you to think about products that people are going to come in to buy again and again. Maybe it's a refillable station. So if you have soap, I have clients who have soap refillable, you know, they have a special soap, they have candle refillable stations, you know, those kinds of things. You get them hooked on your product and they come in again and again to refill it or to buy more of that product. So thinking about consumables, especially right now, it is super trendy and it's trending, you know, I'm not making this up, but in different areas, we're looking at a lot of the different refillable stations. Sustainability is actually on the top of the Pinterest trends this year of, you know, or one of the Pinterest trends about people considering and Googling how can they be more sustainable. So again, consumable, consumables, the goal for the consumable is the recurring part coming back again and again, but what could you do with like a refillable station or a product? The next type of recurring and returning customer uh, revenue 
could be rentals. Is there a, tools or supplies? Maybe it's stencil res, rentals or party trays, or maybe it's clothing or jewelry. I, I don't know what it could be for you and your beautiful business, but what are some things that you could rent out to people that to your customers that is in support of your brand? And again, all of these things always have to come into support of your brand. I should have mentioned that at the very top of the show. Like, we're not going to start doing things that don't make sense for our brand. And I hope if you're listening that you already <laughs> know that, but we want to make sure we stay on brand. But so re- rentals is one way. Repair and maintenance. So what about if you're a bike shop or jewelry, you sell jewelry or, you know, anything like that? Is there something that you could do in-house? Again, some of these are not going to be applicable, but I'm planting seeds. Maybe there is one little thing. Is there one little thing? Repair and maintenance. So under the recurring revenue, we had recurring like subscription boxes. We have memberships in around your store. There's all kinds of ways to do memberships. We have cons- consider consumables, rentals, repair and maintenance, thinking about ways that we can get your customers to come back again and again and service them again and again and again, right? So, and again, make sure it's profitable. So the second type of revenue stream that we could be looking at is under the rent and events. So this is, of course, uh, when I say events, I mean paid events. So is there a, can you host VIP paid events, market pop-ups off, you know, off-site or on all kinds of retailers that are doing that. So you charge a fee and you host an event. You invite people to come in. It's a ticketed event. A lot of retailers don't do that. And there's lots of opportunity to do that. I have tons of retailer clients that are doing that. It's a wonderful thing. It's good for crowd control. It's good for, there's all kinds of reasons to do it. It helps cover your costs and customers will pay to come to a signature event that they love. So a a paid hosting, hosting paid events. What about teaching and educational workshops? Now, again, some of you listening, I know that you have your creative workshops and that's kind of where we always think creative workshops. We, you know, hopefully, and many of you may know, that's what I used to do. I used to have all kinds of workshops. I would teach how to use the product and then I would sell those products to all my people. And, you know, it's a nice cycle. It's a wonderful cycle. I know a lot of you do that, but there's lots of opportunities for experience workshops. So if you have space in your shop or you have availability to, you know, create something, (laughs) create a table, if you have a table, you can bring in guest teachers to teach things in your shop, again, paid. And then there's also the opportunity to educate customers on your different product lines. So it's not just DIY. It could be cooking. It could be there's all kinds of like different types of things like how to use a knife, how to sharpen your garden tools. Like these things can be paid experiences. So thinking about workshops and guest guest teaching events in your shop. There's another thing you can do for a revenue stream. You can rent out your space. So you could rent out your space for photo shoots to a local photographer, a client who does that. You could rent out your space to, I'm thinking like small groups and gatherings or, you know, there's all kinds of different ways that we can rent out our space. So you could rent out if you have a workshop, you can even, and this these, these clients that are renting out their spaces don't have workshops, the ones that I'm sort of thinking of right now. But, you know, if you do have a workshop space, you can also rent that out to local community groups and, you know, all kinds of people get the word out. Come up with a come up with a strategy around that. We can help you with that inside the inner circle. Come up with how you come up with how you want to do that. How, what liabilities and what that looks like, and rent out your space. It's a wonderful way, actually, to grow your audience of customers who may not know you and make a little money at it too. So it's a it's a win win. Another way you can do for rent under rent and events is you can bring in other people as pop-up guests. So this is going to benefit you marketing wise, but it's also going to benefit you financially. You can charge people to come in. So let's say on Saturday, you have a donut lady who comes in, she pays to rent a corner of your shop. Maybe it's flowers or bread or Friday food truck and you rent the space to them, like you're renting or you're, you know, charging them to come into your space. So there's all kinds of different ways that we can do pop-up guests and vendors. 
Another one is rent your space in your shop or rent space in your shop. So you could bring in vendors, you can bring in complimentary products. Of course, we're always thinking about our brand, right? We're not going to do weird things. But one of my clients is a pet shop boutique. And she has she has a space in her shop that she rents out to a dog bakery. <laughs> like they rent a little corner of her shop. They have the, the shelving units and, you know, the, their, their product, they keep it merchandised and she rents them space. Plus she takes a commission off of their products. So that's a very common thing. So thinking about renting space in your shop, what could that look like for you? Is there, is there an opportunity there? Another one is events off site. And I know we mentioned events earlier, but can you take the show on the road? Can you take your show on the road? So I did this for years. I did it with local hotels and I traveled and I took my show on the road and I met new people. I, of course, charged, but is that a revenue that you can do? So for me, it was a DIY and creative workshop, but is there another opportunity? Is there something that you do? Maybe it is, you know, again, whatever it is you specialize in your shop, what could you do? Could you do a fashion show offsite? Could you do, you know, something again, charged, it's a paid event offsite. So there's all kinds of different things that we can do offsite. Another one that one of my, another really quick one, when it comes to events, is I have a client who takes people on day trips or retreats. Well, retreats are really popular right now. Do you have a group of clients, like a group, would they love to just go picking with you or go to auction houses with you or maybe go to the local fashion show or maybe down to visit the new library being built because you're a bookseller? I don't know what that could look like for you, but could you organize and take a day trip with, you know, a paid day trip with your customers? Thinking about it, think about the different ways. I have another client who did a local craft. They went to a whole bunch of, I want to say antique shops. The words craft was coming out, but antique shops. Like she took a whole group of people on a whole day going through all like local, you know, local craft shop not craft, antique shop tour. The words are not coming out, even though I'm even like got my notes here. But anyhow, so thinking about all of these different types of day, tri day trips or retreats that you could do, thinking about your people, what would they love to do? You're building a community. I know you are. That's what we always talk about building, you know, a, a group of people who know, like, and trust you. They want to hang out with you too. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe you're like, oh my gosh, that is the last thing I would want to do, Wendy. But I'm trying to plant seeds. I want you to start thinking about different opportunities and what could that look like. All right, number three is adding adding opportunities to things that you're already doing. So what are you already doing in, maybe you're making candles for your shop. This is kind of a common one. Or maybe you're making printed goods. Like maybe you have your own printed journals or something you're doing along that could you wholesale these to other shops could you white label them and by that I mean could you take your candles and let me put my own label on it or another shop put their own label on it so you price for wholesale and they retail you know they retail it in, in they retail them in their shops so Again, this is something you'll have to think about whether you have the bandwidth, but is there something you're already doing that we can just expand? How many, like, what would that look like? Maybe just two more shops? Or what if we sold, you know, 2,000 units over the next six months? What would that look like for you? And do you have the bandwidth? And is the is the margin there? And all of those questions we asked at the beginning, but I'm seeing more and more people do this. And it's really fun to see retailers growing their revenue stream in this way. Something they're already doing, they're just putting a system behind it. And that's what you have to do. Put a system behind ordering and all of that. And again, there's a, those are the details we can help you work out. But those are things that are just exciting and fun to do. The next one is services. Are you an expert at something in your shop? A lot of you are. I feel like hands are up right now. Like you are an expert at something. What is easy for you? So maybe it's custom work or design, like custom work if you're in the creative world or design work if you're selling, you know, home goods. What can you bring in-house that would help your clients? Maybe you're really good or one of your team members or something or you have somebody that does upholstery really well. Let's say you're, let's say <laughs> that you sell furniture and, you know, or 
antiques or something, you know, could you bring your upholstery in house? What can you know, what can you do for others? What are things that you're kind of sending people away for to other people? That, hey, we could bring this in house. We could bring this in house. I can do this or I can hire somebody to do this and they can do it in the back room or wherever it is. Like, what could that look like for you? What can you do for others, for your customers that you can do in house? Start thinking about that. There's a, there's lots of ideas there. My ideas are are brewing. I'm I'm trying to think of a few clients right now, and I ooh I should make this recommendation and stuff. This is what this is what I love to do. Okay, so what another one? So adding opportunities. Can you get your products in other people's subscription boxes? So we talked earlier about sub- subscription box, and if you're like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Not or I did that, didn't work, or I don't like that idea. Can you put your product, something that you're already doing in somebody else's, I guarantee you somebody else is doing something, you know, in a subscription box. I say subscription box, but it could also be wholesaling your products. But subscription boxes are a great way to look at first because there's a lot of volume for some people. So is there a connection or something that you can make along that lines and get your product in other people's subscription boxes? Something to think about. Corporate gifting, groups, organizations, large orders. I'm thinking cookies, candles, boxes, you know, those kinds of things. Weddings, weddings are great. So if you can make that happen, and this is something that's been very successful with a lot of my clients, and they've done amazing with this by being really um, intentional about letting people know, hey, you know, we can do gift boxes for you or we can put together or we do these corporate gift giving or whatever organization gift giving I'm going to tell you that is a untapped market for a lot of people think about what you can do in that and and start planting that seed event and hospitality organizers are always looking for something they are always looking for something so can you connect with event and hospitality organizers in your area And they could be looking for an experience. So if you are a craft studio or a DIY, or if you have workshops, get in touch with those people in your community and beyond. I say beyond because they like to bring people in. They're also always looking for swag, you know, stuff that they want to, something that's unique and different. Everybody's tired of the same stuff. What could you do? What could you do (laughs) and share with people? Again, with event and hospitality organizers, something to think about, right? So collaborations are next on my list here. Can you put any of your core products in another person's small shop or big shop (laughs) or in their booth or in their seasonal gift shop or whatever? So this, for some reason, perplexes some retailers. But if you and I are have a similar type client and you're over there and I'm over here, why not like, hey, I can give you this whole line of products and will you put them on the shelf? And hey, I'll put your thing on my shelf and why not, right? So let's think about, I do see that work really well with certain collaborations. So collaborations are amazing. Find some biz BFFs and make some connections. Okay, I have a whole list here, but I'm just going to jump to the next couple of big ones. But looking at e-commerce as a, as a stream, I mean, I know that seems obvious, but that is an additional revenue stream. It is not for everybody, as we know, it is separate and run differently than your foot traffic, like across the threshold. But e-commerce as a, as a revenue stream is kind of a no-brainer if you're like kind of leaving money on the table and I I say this with little stars and you know quote air quotes going on here if you already have the systems in place or if it could be an easy add-on so again if the bandwidth's not going to be too bad it, it can be such a great fit for busy people especially it could be a great fit for your local customers who just want to order something quick and do curbside pickup, whatever, you know, there's all kinds of different ways, but it's also going to expand your beautiful brand beyond. And I see a lot of retailers who didn't really want to be e-commerce retailers. They're like, I don't really want to be known as like a just e-com because it is different. You market it different, all of the things. Anyway, that's another podcast, but e-commerce is different, but it is a great additional revenue stream if you have the technology set up. And usually most of our POS systems now are pretty easy to I shouldn't say that. I don't want to say anything's easy because tech is never easy as we know, or we always tell it, tell ourselves it's not easy. But anyway, I want you to just investigate that, plant that seed for you. Okay, last but not least, passive potential income. 
So doesn't that sound great? Passive? Nothing's passive, just so you know. <laughs> Nothing's passive. So I have a, like a caveat here before I share all of these. You know, they're, these are, you know, a little bit different and I want you to just be open to thinking about them. So affiliate income is the first thing I have on my list. You can earn commissions from product referrals for things you don't sell. <laughs> if you're not selling, you know, if you're not selling something in your store and you're always referring a product or a service or somebody in your community, they may have an affiliate program or referral program. So, you know, you say, hey, here, just use my card and, you know, tell them, tell them Susie sent you and use Susie 20. And, you know, it sounds like a little bit and it might just be, you know, a little bit, <laughs> it might just be a little bit at a time. But I will tell you, there are retailers who are making good affiliate income. Like it's, it's paying for something every month, right? So, you know, it can, it can build up depending on your product line and what you're selling, whatever, you know, what, I hate saying whatever, but there's so many opportunities there. Just be open to looking for it. You may be surprised. Also, affiliate income can, can come in the form of thinking about like, maybe you, you sell books. I have clients who sell are booksellers and they are an affiliate for an audiobook program. So they are affiliates for Libra, Libro FM, which is really good. By the way, if you listen to audiobooks, I'm going to put a plug in for Libro FM because they are supporting small businesses by paying them affiliate income. So it's awesome, right? So these retailers are booksellers, but they have clients that want to listen to audiobooks, even though they like real books, but they want audiobooks just like you and I. So they're, they're making affiliate income. Again, that can be built up. Another one can be, and don't shoot the messenger here, but it can happen. The other one can be maybe an Amazon influencer shop. Now, again, this is not necessarily, I don't want to send everybody to Amazon, but if there's things that you're not selling that are a great complement to your product line, you know, you can have a little tab on your website and you can just say, you know, this kind of goes with that, right? So we sell paint, but we don't sell paintbrushes. We sell this, but we don't sell that. And maybe nobody in your community does either. So we want to kind of make sure it's more specialty, but that's, that's not a bad thing to have. And that would be just a plug resource on your, on your, on your website. And you, you sent, you set that up. Another thing, this is going to be a little bit, just go with me on this one because it works and it's possible for some of you, it may not be for everybody selling ads in your shop. And by that, I mean, and it is working, like, you know how grocery stores have end caps, they have physical ads, you know, they, the end caps, meaning like the specials at the end of the aisle, you can have physical ads on your shelf, maybe a digital signage out front, or even on your website, maybe you have ad space on your website. Now, we don't want that to look like, you know, eat at Joe's, eat at Joe's. Although if Joe's paying you and it could be done tastefully, <laughs> maybe that's what we'll do. But I have seen collaborations again, where if you're the local go-to amazing gift shop in your town, the local bakery, the local coffee shop, the restaurants or the hotels in the area will pay you to put an ad on your website. And it's, you know, tasteful. It's done and, you know, do a nice, lovely little graphic. And it just says, we're proud to support Joe's coffee shop, whatever, you know, whatever it is, just think about it. It is, it's, it's two ways to do that digitally on your website or actually in store. So you can do it with a nice little sign in store. Maybe it's at your cash and it says, you know, we, you know, we'd love to recommend Joe's coffee shop. Again, I always recommend Joe's coffee shop. <laughs> Someday I will go to a go Joe's coffee shop, but I, you know, and that might just be a little tiny, maybe $75 a month that they're paying you, but they know that your customers align with their customers. So they will pay that to you. So it does work. The other one is you can create a course or an ebook or a PDF or something that's on repeat that's on your website for your customers to buy something you teach or something that you're really good at something that you're amazing at something that people are asking you about all the time. This is a very common way to um, add passive income. And again, it's not passive because you have to make it and you have to maintain it. But it is a great way to think about how you could just put something, especially if you have a unique, a unique style or a unique way of looking at something or teaching something. Every, we all do. We all have unique ways. Okay. So those are our four areas of adding revenue streams. So remember, first, we're going to funnel through all of these, make sure that it, we like it. It lights us up. We're excited about it. There's profit. It's bandwidth you know, 
will our customers love it? Will our new customers, like the new area that we're trying to go through, we want to really make sure that we put it through that funnel. The, the four areas are recurring and returning. So making sure that we're getting them back with things like subscription boxes and stuff, rents and rent and events. So what can we do paid hosting events? Like what can we charge for in, in, in the events side of things? The third one is adding opportunities from things that we're already doing and our, you know, our shop that we already have and all of those things, collaborations. And number four was passive potential. So all of those four areas are something to think about. I would just like you to think about, open up your mind, think about different ways. I see some of these working for a lot of my clients. I see some of them never, like no way in a million years would I ever, you know, but think it through. What could that look like? Those are great words to ask yourself. This also might be a really good idea to pull out the parking lot ideas. I teach a lot about having a parking lot, <laughs> an idea parking lot notebook. So I always have mine physical and I have a, a, a virtual one. So maybe there's some of these things that you might want to mark down for a future idea. It's not in the cards this quarter or next quarter, but you know what? Maybe next year when we're planning our goals, we're going to pull out this ideas and we're going to, we're, this idea folder and we're going to go through it. We want to make sure that we want to make sure that we are doing things that are going to be good for our brand. I want to just say that again and again, and I've mentioned it a few times. I just want to make sure that this is something that aligns with you, aligns with your brand, but maybe got you thinking a little bit different. Okay. I hope that was helpful to you today. I would love to know, like I'm super nosy, you guys, like super nosy. I would love to know. I love feedback. Let me know if anything here was helpful. I've been having some wonderful conversations with some of you inside my DMs lately. I really, truly appreciate when you let me know if this was helpful or, you know, you can tell me the other side of things too. It's like, I wish, you know, this isn't really helpful. But if you take one of these ideas and you run with it or you, something spurred something, let's just say that, I would love for your feedback. Let us know. Don't forget to leave. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and don't forget to leave a review. It really helps us be found by more retailers. We are being found by a lot of retailers right now. And I'm so excited. And if you're new here, hey, hello, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for listening all the way through. And yeah, we would just love it if you would subscribe, share, take a screenshot if you're listening to it on, the, on you know, if you're listening to it and share us, share it and tag it on Instagram. It just makes my day. So and it might be somebody else might find it as well, too. So thank you, my friends. It has been a fabulous hopefully fabulous for you. I love sharing different revenue streams. Can you tell them all like, like lit up about this? I get really excited. This is what I do really well. I feel like I'm a really good visionary for other retailers and really and helping them, you know, really, really find and refine their business. So this is our goal and our mission, especially inside the retailers inner circle with my private clients. I have coaching options. Reach out if I can help you. If there's anything you would like to sit down and talk with to me about, there are opportunities for us to work together. Okay, my friends, have a fabulous week. I will see you back here next week. Same time, same place. See you then. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.